Hello there, good people of the interwebs. How are we all? Here we are, this is the second video of the channel and we're here drilling holes because where else would it be, where else would we be, what else would we be doing? So yeah, today we're just actually gonna have a look at rods turning because that's what drillers stare at all day every day at rods turning. So yeah, we're gonna look at them turn look at the drill. Uh, we're also going to have a quick look at the uh, the gauges and the screen and the display and what we actually look at and what tells us information about the rod's turning. So let's get straight into it. So as you can see rods are turning. So Obviously this is a top hammer drill, meaning that that big thing right there is our hammer, which is on top of the drill string or the rods. Fascinating stuff, I know. So that little black piece there is called the shank. That's what connects our sort of hammer to the rods. Then we have some centralizer jaws there, which can open and close and some lower ones which do the same those lower jaws are on a dust hood which uh, has a big suction hose coming out the back of it and sucks up all the dust now I am fortunate enough that this rig has automated rod handling so what does that mean that means that when it gets to the bottom here, this will automatically break loose. It will unthread from itself. The hammer will move to the top. A new rod is brought out. The hammer then screws everything back together. Centralizers will open and it resumes drilling all by itself, which is pretty cool. So, that's what I stare at all day, every day. Fascinating. Now, what I also stare at is this lovely screen right here. Now, this tells us all kinds of cool and crazy things. So, what have we got? We got flushing air pressure. That's how much bar of air we are putting down the hole. This is fully adjustable. Um, currently got it sitting on 45%. These C45s, um, how can I say? Obviously you can adjust it percentage wise. And the lower air you run, the less load it actually puts on the compressor and you actually um, burn less fuel, which is pretty cool. These things are pretty fuel efficient. So um, yeah, that's our air pressure. That there is our shank lubrication. So it's basically uh, an air tool oil that lubricates the hammer. What else have we got? That is our dust collector, currently at 100%, which is why it's sucking up all the dust. And you can see the, uh, the cyclone there with the little sock. Has suction, it's sucked up, so that's a good thing. Uh, it's our water injection. Not only are we blowing air down the hole, but we can also put water down the hole. So it's at 70%, but the light's off because it's currently turned off because we don't need water down the hole. Cool. Over to this side, what have we got? This is basically our depth counter. So the top number is how far down the hole has been drilled. The bottom number is where in the hole is the drill bit. So if we were to stop drilling right now and lift the drill bit up, this number would come up closer to zero and the top number would stay the same. This number in the middle here is our pen rate, or our rate of penetration. So we're currently moving through the rock at a mind-boggling speed, not really. Um, yeah, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 meters a minute, which is pretty consistent in this ground. And then that is our depth counter stop. So once the rig drills to 17.1 meters, it'll stop drilling, and then I'll have to pull the rods out and another hole. 
Um, this one here, so basically that's the top of a rod, that image, and number four. So that tells us that we've currently got four rods on the drill string. So this rod that we're seeing here is the fourth rod, and there's another three rods already in the ground. Okay, what have we got next? This bad boy here is our rotation pressure. So arrows going round means rotation, arrows pointing inwards towards themselves means some form of pressure. Um, so what we ask for is 110 RPM and then it gives us a pressure. Now if this pressure was up really high, it could mean that we're deviating, it could mean that we're getting bogged, it could mean that we're using the wrong style of drill bit for the ground. Um, could mean multiple things. And obviously once it gets, if it gets up too high, it'll actually jam up and the rods actually won't turn anymore, which is not cool. Um, rotation, the reason why we can adjust that, um, different types of ground, different types of styles of drill bit will actually uh, drill better with different amounts of rotation speed. So that's why that's adjustable. Automated rod handling, going for the kill. Gonna go put that last rod on. Sends it up, brings it out. Threads in the top, threads in the bottom. That percussion, that hammering that happens there, that shouldn't be happening. Uh, this is a brand new rig, so we're still ironing out some of the issues. And that will get addressed, because it shouldn't be doing that. All right. Our middle screen here, arrow pointing down with, I don't know, sparks coming off it. That is our percussion or our impact. So the hammer is currently being sort of moved along or activated or operated with what I'm asking for is 180 bar which we're getting pretty pretty much there um, if you give it too much percussion for well all these settings interrelate right so I'll cover the damper pressure and then we'll come back to percussion but that's basically how hard the hammer's hitting so we have a, a low hammer or like it's like a two-stage there's a collaring mode so when our arrow is full that's drilling. If it goes half, then our percussion pressure drops as well to a preset sort of 130, 135. And that also slows down um, how, how much pressure we put behind the hammer pushing it forwards, which again is our feed. So that's our feed pressure there. That's what we ask for. And then the result of our feed pressure is our damper pressure. So how much resistance are the rods putting back up, pushing into the hammer? So, we're, because we're on sort of collaring mode, also known as half hammer, we get less percussion and less feed. So if we crank this up to full hammer, like that, everything ramps up. So percussion pressure comes back up to around our 180, what we want. And our damp pressure, damper pressure has now jumped up to 60. 82 bars, what we're asking for. And our feed pressure is how hard we're pushing down. So how hard is that chain, which, if I figure out how to zoom this thing, how hard that chain that you can see running there is pulling that hammer down and, yeah, ensuring sufficient contact with the rock. If it's only pressing pressing against the rock too lightly then what will happen is the impact won't actually transfer through the steel very efficiently and so it'll chatter and what happens is the shock wave from the hammer will go down through the drill string it'll almost bounce off the rock some of it will break the rock but part of that energy will bounce back up through the drill string and it'll actually fatigue the rods and the rods will crack um, and then you break rods and you lose shit down in the hole, which is not cool. So that's why you need a sufficient amount of feed pressure to have, you know, good dampening pressure. Um, if you have too much feed, then you'll actually start bending the rods and you'll actually 
the hull will actually want to deviate because you're actually, yeah, like kind of bending the rods. The rods are only two inch rods, so two inches in diameter and they will flex. So, right, I've been yakking for way too long, but that's our first screen basically covered. Now there are more, there's more to it. Uh, for example, if the rotation gets too high, it'll actually back off the feed, which will also back off the percussion. They all sort of work together. But yeah, that's our one screen. And then of course, we've got multiple other screens in here, which tell us a whole bunch of different other things. So that's it for this video. Covered a lot, but that's mainly, that's they're the main things that you stare at all day, every day. So yeah, that's all we got for today. Um, any questions, of course, leave them in the comments. And yeah, let us know. Let us know what you reckon. If you're finding this useful, if I'm boring the shit out of you, let me know. It's all, uh, everything's welcome. So we'll see you in the next video.